All right, thoughts of where we are now. We're faster along than most people. Yeah. That's all I think about. I mean, like, I can't sleep I know, at you I wake up. I wake up at 12 o'clock, I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got 13% left on my phone. I need to charge it up. <laughs> so I crawl over you, try to grab the, the charging cord, wake you up. Then I crawl back over and I'm like, okay, if I build a fort of covers over my head, I can get my laptop out and I can watch the laptop because I can listen to the sound. Then so on. really all you have to do for me is like block the reflectix that's on the back window there because that's what shines the light right back into me. But I put my pillow up as a shield. Anyway, it doesn't, you don't bother me when you wake up in the middle of the night. first step and I got to double check is the water situation because when you go to shut one of these down I always disconnect the water hose and let it drain out from the hose or from the spigot and then I made this little contraption to go to my air compressor some people put like antifreeze in there uh, but I found when I use this and I hook it to the air compressor you go on the inside you open up the valves and once you hit the air to it, um, there's quite a bit of water in the, the PEX plumbing and in this six gallon water heater. And if you don't get that water out, what happens is when it gets here in Tennessee below 30 degrees, let's say 27, 28 degrees, um, the water will freeze in the lines. And most of these campers, when it comes to plumbing, are nothing but plastic uh, fittings and accessories. And so it'll just expand and contract and bust. And if anybody's had a camper set over the winter and they didn't winterize it, and they go to hook up the water and they got a leak behind the toilet or at the kitchen sink, that's what's going on is that water is frozen and bust in there. So before I shut this one down, I blew out the lines and also opened up the water heater. And that's already unplugged. So you know, all the water is drained out of that. So got to put the plug back in, turn the water back on, check the leaks, and we should be good to go. All right, so we've been make, making some progress and Charlotte's been at work during the day, so I've been out here working by myself. And when I get on a roll, I forget to film. So we're starting the framing process. I've built two of the window yeah. frames of 14, so, oh, of 16, so I got 14 more to go. And they're all going up there. There'll be two in the back, two in the front, six on each side, windows all the way around. And the way we're doing the uh, joist is two by sixes fit right in the C-channel. Bolt those and then I got some joist hangers coming. But we're not gonna put the floor in in the middle right now till we get the roof on. That way we don't have to worry about the uh, flooring getting wet. So once we get the roof on here and everything tied together and pretty much dried in, that's when we'll cut the sides out and then run the floor span all the way across on the inside. So right now I'm making some beams, laminating some two by sixes together uh, for some support areas that we're gonna need and going forward. <laughs> 